Hey everybody, got a new ITL for you. We're going to do some talking about gates, and we're going to we're going to mix politics and mixing. How do we do that? You're going to meet a senator. Will, let's roll it. You know where you're at. I like that, Herb. That was good. That was a good one. Hey guys, everybody, glad to have you back. Uh, this is going to be. I think one of our best shows, could be our best show we've ever done coming up. I, I know because I've already played it in my mind a couple of times, but uh, good to have you back this week. Um, I'm a little laid back this week. I'm not quite sure why, but... You maybe, are? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't notice a difference. <laughs> well, my dealer just ran out of the good stuff. Oh, know? got it. Got it. So you got the medicinal stuff. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, you, you know, at the uh, Pensada's Place Megaplex, we've got the green room, and mm -hmm. you know, Jimmy's in the green room, so he can't hear us talking. First well, time he's going to hear this is when the the, the uh, Wheel of Fortune girls usher him out. Got it. Lexus and Mercedes. Right. They, you know, <laughs> yeah. experiment. They tape here afterwards. After yeah. We leave. Right. Yeah. Right. But man, um, I got to tell you, whenever I've said this before on the show, whenever I. Um, pick up an album that I know I'm on, mm -hmm. I look for about four guys just to make sure I'm going to sound better than everybody on the record, mm -hmm. and the guy today scares the dog shit out of me. It's like when I know he's on the record, I, I, I know i got to step step my game up. So I, I'm real happy to have Jimmy on the show. Um, he's someone I've respected and admired, not just as a person, but you know, as somebody that epitomizes uh, what you can do in our craft and mm -hmm. take it to a whole nother level as a as a, a musician, an engineer, and a, and a person. So it's going to be a good show. Absolutely. Um, Drew's looking good today. Well, thank yeah. you. Been well, let's very, get some of the... Very non-gay way. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I have no idea. you got to stop with... mumbling, Drew. <laughs> it's the bowl of shit in my mouth. I can't help oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, those are two references to shit that we've had today. That's the quota oh, for the, the show. Oh, the FCC, man, they're honest. We've got to watch. Well, it's the WTT, Will Thompson's oh, actually. thing. So uh, let, let's do a little homework. As you know, guys, uh, your Facebook comments and stuff, I'm going to talk to uh, talk a bit about them. But there's our page. Make sure you reach out to us like you usually do, the Pensados Place uh, Facebook page. is always flowing alive. Twitter us, and uh, obviously you can catch us on YouTube if you don't catch us now. Um, Couple things we obviously want to mention. We want we want to mention our boys at Vintage King. Hey, yep. we love VK, and they're in there. I think Drew Townsend's in the chat room today, which is manned by our CJ, not the DJ, Mr. Drew Adams. Drew is sitting over there. Hello, Drew. Do that again now. Now that you're on camera. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, very, very cool. Um, know that at the end of the show, we're going to. Uh, talk about our avid giveaway and uh we've got some cool stuff that obviously oh, yeah. the pro tools nine so we'll get to that we've got a very cool announcement for you which uh which we will do we're going to announce the winner um he's from london of all places and speaking of Does that, that mean i get to deliver it What's that? I get to deliver it. Right? Yeah he's okay. going to come to your house you can walk to the front door no i, I, I thought the deal with avid was i get Expenses to deliver these in person and film it and right. capture that, film like, you like to Ed the McMahon door. with the big check on Clearing House, you yeah. know? Yeah, they're just going to have you come to the door. It's okay. not going to go any farther than that. Um, but I wanted to make a, a couple shout outs um, and sort of speak to you guys for a quick second about the incredible power that you have. Um, we've gotten a ton in the last couple of weeks of discussions from different schools and from different countries. You and I both had conversations mm -hmm. with. A guy from Pakistan who is just, oh, yeah. you know, he got, I yeah. think his name is Ali Abbas Alavi, which is very really cool. Mm -hmm. We wanted to correct something from last week. The picture that we talked about are a group of engineers from Taipei, not Taiwan. You guys mentioned that, so we want to correct that. Uh, I got to give a personal shout out to a couple of folks Matt Zimmerman, Ryan Lee, uh, uh, Quentin Brillinger, I think it's Brian Lee Beruka, Michael David, and Carrick Smith. Uh, these are Twizzle Flanger brothers from the Pixel Blue College in Edmonton, Canada. They actually wanted, so I want to say hi to you guys. Oh, yeah. um, listen, we even had a viewer, I think it's, I forget his name, it might be Mitchell Gonzalez, who suggested that Dave show be on E! Entertainment. So, E! Holler, <laughs> if you need to. <laughs> I like the Oprah one better. I want to be on Oprah. We're, we're going to do that. We're going to do that, too. So, lastly, and because I know are you, you want to get to the... Are you drooling? 
No, that's that's oh. true. Uh, oh. This is Dave. Dave's <laughs> attempts at humor, guys, has been part yeah, of. But I got medical excuses. Part of the way he does humor is here about <laughs> me. So uh, the one thing, as you keep doing, which has been really phenomenal for us, I can't speak enough about your power. Is when you go to YouTube, make sure you like us, subscribe, add us to your playlist. That stuff comes up and impacts us in really great ways and allows us to keep going and bring you the show. Anyways, enough of all that stuff. As I said, we got we got political royalty in the house. So why don't we get to ITL and then we can get to our guest? And that sounds good to me. Uh, Will, you got that thing chopped up and ready to go? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Will and Drew, there was one thing I said I would mention at the beginning of ITL today. What was that? Uh, you're talking about how you use this the reverb effect for rap vocals to fill them in. Oh, yeah, but that's next week's show, though. Gotcha. Yeah, I think. Never but, mind all yeah, that. Yeah, we'll do that We'll do that next week. Okay, Gates, um, poor little lowly Gates. Nobody ever cares that much about little Gates, and uh, uh, I thought I'd try and help you elevate your thinking. Now, I say this in, in, the, in the piece, and I want to say it again, um, at, at the expense of getting bitch slapped by Herb for taking too long, but... Um, <laughs> Two, no. Nine, don't necessarily eight, look. Don't necessarily look at seven, what I uh, don't necessarily six, look at what I'm telling you. Transcend the garbage I'm showing you. Think of it and and, and man, take it to another level. Run it, Will. I'm about to get hit. Okay, everybody, welcome to another ITL. Uh, we've we've done a few that I liked, a few you liked. So this, hopefully this will be another one that you like. Uh, we're going to talk about gates. I know that sounds a little mundane, but there are some cool things you can do with gates. And after I show you these, I'm sure you guys are going to think of some things to hit me back with and, and, and uh, take these things to a, these ideas to a whole other level. Um, let's start off with, let's say you've got a kick drum and you want to add a little sub to it. Well, all you got to do is figure out the key of the song. This is one way, figure out the key of the song. Oh, you already know the key of the song probably because you're a producer. And... Um, then convert that to frequency. There's charts that do that for you. Uh, I'm going to pick something simple like, uh, let's pretend like the key is A, so we know A is 440. Divide that by 2, that's uh, 220. Divide by 2, 210. And divide by 2 is 55. So let's take a sine wave generator and put it um, on 55 cycles right here. Now after the sine wave generator, we're going to put a, a gate. <clears throat> I'm using a drummer. You can use anything. It's just I thought this one was a little more instructive the way the knobs and stuff were laid out. Okay, now the gate, we're going to side chain. We're going to use bus 57. We're going to take the information from bus 57 um, right here. You see bus 57 from our kick. And so now the, our kick is going to open and close the signal generator. Now the signal generator is set on 50 cycles. So, okay, that's the signal generator by itself. That's all you're hearing. If you've got little speakers, I'll, I'll, I'll do it at 100 cycles so you can hear it in a minute. Okay, now let's put the gate in. Okay, now let's take this out. Let me let you hear the kick drum. Show you the gate. You notice here it's open and closing with a kick drum. So let's listen to that. Okay, now we can we can change the release time, we can make it go longer, shorter, and then we can the threshold determines you know, that works like a regular gate. I've, I've got the compressor bypass. This is what you're hearing. That's, that's, that's just the signal generator. Now for you little speaker guys, let's do, um, let's do 110. All right, 
So you can you can do that with any number of things. You don't just have, you don't have to use just sine waves. I'm going to show you how to add some dirt to a snare drum in just uh, next week by doing the, using the same technique. Now, um, another technique with a kick drum is to take a pad or a crunchy guitar like a or a pad, nice smooth little pad, and you want to you want to give a little vibe to it. Let's take our hi hat track. And um, here's our hi-hat track, this blue one. Uh, I'm using a, one of Collins synthesizers. Here's our gate, uh, Waves gate. Let's take it off so you can hear. Okay, here's the, here's the pad. It's just real nice and smooth, nice little A minor. Okay, now, here's our hi-hat. By the way, I'm putting these these uh, keys and buses. I'm putting them on pre. That way, I can make adjustments and it doesn't affect what my what my uh, gate is doing. So keep those on pre. Okay. Now we're sending bus 42 down to the gate. Bus 42. Now let's listen to the gate. Okay, now let's put the gate in. Now that's with just that's just with the the the, the noise the, the floor just barely barely doing anything. If we take it take it all the way down, it's it's it's, it's on and off. Let me remove the hat. But we don't have to take it all the way out. We can um, we can just give it a little vibe. Okay, that gives it a little a little movement. This is without it. Now, I first started doing that on uh, on stunned guitars, you know, like uh, 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 like that. And um, Andrew Andrew Whipper called me the other day and reminded me that you can do it on these pads, and uh, he's doing some neat things with it on pads. Okay, now let's move on. I know I'm moving a little fast, but I I'm trying to strike a balance between you guys that know a lot of this stuff, keeping you interested, and then the new guys, you know, you you're, you're learning as we go, but if if I need to go back and, and, and spend a little more time on one area, just let me know. If, if enough of you say so, I'll uh, I'll do that. All right, guys. Now uh, this is a this is a use for a gate. You're saying, Dave, that's not a gate. I know, but I'm showing you this because I like using the transient designer as a gate. Uh, this is going to be specific to this particular plugin. Um, this one. Uh, I don't think this is a UAD one. I think this is a real one. Uh, this is the, the transient designer from transient designer and then the UAD uh, people make a, a one that's just as good. I mean, they're identical. They're, they're excellent. But let's, let's show you what, I, what, what my dilemma is on this snare. Uh, I just felt like I had too much noise. The, the, I just didn't like that, so I thought, okay, let me um, let me try this. Now I'm, I'm going to raise this up. Just whatever feels in time. Here's bypassed. It's just much tighter fits the song a little better. That's a, that's a gate that's not a gate that you can use as a gate. I use that technique on guitars. I use it on snares. I like a lot of times, I like it on hi-hats because sometimes hi-hats just start bleeding and mushing everywhere and you can, uh, you can do that. Okay? This is the part I've been waiting for for a while. Uh, I, ran, I ran into the uh, 
the, the esteemed Senator Jimmy Douglas at uh, AES last year. Was it this year? Was this it, year. It was this year. February? Uh, no, it was uh, September. September? Yes. And um, I have medical excuses. Um, and uh, this was before the show was even, it was in its, we were, it, Herb was just kind of coming up with the ideas for the show. And I ran into Jimmy, and uh, man, what a cool guy. I said, I'm putting this little thing together, and without even really knowing what it was about or anything, he said, he said, no, Dave, I'll come help you out. And so we've been trying since day one to get him on the show, but he's so busy. We finally got, a, uh, got him in town and on the show, so I'm really happy to have my friend Jimmy Douglas. <laughs> so Jimmy, man, <laughs> um, uh, Foreigner, uh, the new John Legend record, Stones, Aaliyah, one in a million, best snare sound ever. Uh, Jay Z, Aretha, Missy, Justin Timberlake, on and on and on. It'd be quicker for me to list the people you haven't worked with than to list all the people you have. Um, but uh, all those records are like milestones, you know. It's like if you look at my reference library, it should just say Jimmy Douglas catalog. Uh, I've been such a fan of yours for so long. I'm glad we finally get a chance to sit down and talk. So much to talk about. First of all, how you doing? I'm doing good. I, uh, the senator's in the house. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I'm doing very good. And actually, I just, I just came back from London, which was refreshing for me. Not to. I love uh, London. London is ridiculous. And, and you know, when the, I'll say the quality of music that, that they do there, I'm not judging better or worse. It's just there's more of it. Mm. I'm finding more music. They're more happy about just, you know, organically having stuff that is musically grown and, you sure. know, as opposed to machine made and just also. Were you, you know, working when you were there? I was working and I was uh, visiting. I was like uh, making some. Making rounds. Making, well, yeah, yeah, some follow up rounds, basically. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. I, I mixed uh, this record of this young hot girl, Pixie Lot. And uh, it's kind of taken off, so I was like, you know, over there just kind of. Cool. What doing studio? The same. What studio do you like over there? Do you like Sarm? Sarm is very nice. It's, yeah, it's, it's that's okay. Where I, you like know. To work. That's where I, work. I used to like uh, Metropolis or whatever it's called. Oh, that was incredible. It was on an old bus, uh, old uh, power station, next to the bus depot. Oh. And uh, Tom Allen uh, works out of there a lot, actually. Oh, wow. You know, um, and I don't think they're there anymore. Wow. So you know, everybody's kind of retreated to their homes and their little places. Yeah. Yeah. Let's jump right into it, Sir James. You said, um, and I want to pick your brain about this because I, I, I know I can learn from this. Uh, the creative side of things has moved a little bit away from the engineer to the producer relative to what we do. Can you expand on that a little? Because I, I, I find that to be so true. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm finding for me, you know, that the lines between producer, engineer, mixer, and all that stuff, even musician, they kind of be, became one big blur. Yeah. If I was able to give you a quick history, my vision of it, you know. By the way, I call, I call this the brave new world because it's changing. I'm not bitching about it. I'm not downing it. It just happens to be the brave new well, world. You're at we're the doing, forefront of it. You you know, you'd be happy because you are the future. <laughs> we're, we're doing stuff that's just a little different, but it's not really any different. It's just the roles keep moving around, you know. I was fortunate to be in a situation where you walked into a studio and, and here it is, the magic of that room with all this stuff that nobody knew what it did made you very, very important. You could fuck up a person's session very easily or you could make it very easily. Fortunately, I think I was the latter. But, uh, <laughs> um, well, I but, was the former. <laughs> Some of my early sessions, and I hope nobody ever brings those back to the internet. <laughs> I'm not going to say. No, I didn't do any bad ones for you. No, no, no. I was good when I moved to L.A. You were, absolutely. You good in L.A. So, you know, you had a situation where people did not know how to do whatever, or they could not tell you, put a 5 dB at 100 on. They couldn't do it. They didn't know what the hell you were doing, so they had to rely on you to be that person. And a producer could have a vision, but he couldn't really have it done until he had a bunch of musicians to pull it together for him. So now you have that position, and now here's a an engineer, mixer, who can actually do other things to it to enhance it, your Tom Dowds, etc. We gotta talk about Tom. You know, told, you know my, yeah. my, my mentor. And, uh, and um, then you have that, then you have, I guess, a songwriter who, the producer, would take somebody's song and make that, because he needed some raw material, he needed a script to work with, so he would take somebody that specifically sat there and just played the piano or guitar and wrote a song 
with no embellishments, no cute little sounds, no whatever. And he says, this is how you're going to make it big. And then he comes to you and he goes, we're going to make it big. And we have all these things. How, we, how can we make it different, bigger, and better? So you had a basic team of people doing something. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the artist, the interpreter. And the interpreter comes, and like, I'll pick an Aretha because it goes that far back. And, you know, nobody can interpret a song like Aretha could do. I mean, you know, I'm just, that's one of the things that she did well. Wasn't a great writer, not a producer, not a mixer. She freaking sang. <laughs> and that was her job. So what you have, basically, is you have a dynamic here of all these different things coming together to create. And, of course, there's a mission of musicians that put their input into the producer, doing it their way, a guy playing guitar his way. And you have this big melting pot of this dynamics and dimension in music that just made it rich and it made all the parts vibrant. Then, you know, let's fast forward real fast forward real fast into a new digital world where suddenly, uh, you know, a kid can have a vision and he can go, ah, it's raining outside, ah, it's raining outside, and he can get put going, oh, I got a little thing, boom, ah, it's raining outside, mm. ah, it's raining outside, and now he has his friend who goes, yeah, that's dope, yeah, that's dope, and he pushes it a couple times with a sampler, and now we put some strings that we found in a little sample bun bin, and vroom, we have a whole string section, and we have all that, and basically when they're done, the record's kind of done. And then you give it to somebody to mix it, and it's like, well, what am I mixing? You kind of did it. You kind of had the sounds and the feel of everything that you wanted. So all that magic and all that mystery is gone. There's only one thing about what just happened. It's very one-dimensional. It's one mind delivering a whole package of goods. Mm -hmm. And my analogy, and it's, it's, I, do, I do weird analogies sometimes, but think about this. Well, this is the place for it. <laughs> this is the place. You I, know? Was glad, I thought he was going to ask us to do the part. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Rain By the way, did you, oh, wait, did did you, you sample that? that? It's going to rain? <laughs> we can wait, let me work out the publishing splits and everything okay. first. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't There's do that. No yeah, boy, it's, <laughs> probably, it's probably already out there already. Exactly. Where's my world to, Joe? your boy. We're, um, we're so, um, the, uh, the, but my, you know, in thinking just in a physical way about that description of what we, what we just heard, I, everything I do when I do sound, I think of it, meant, I think of it visually, just something I've always done. I don't know. You say that sometimes, Dave. That, you you know, know, think in visual terms. It is. Yeah. It, it's a visual medium, even though it's really inside of here. Yeah, you know. You it's, said you said in one interview, I'm a finisher, and now, you know, it's like, it's, it, that kind of fits that that description of what we do. So, man. So I was listening to some some stuff of yours on the internet uh -huh. and uh, mix online, and the, the interviewer said something like, uh, "So Dave Pensada says that uh, you have to pan everything in." You're like, "Fuck that asshole! I don't pan nothing I didn't in." Say asshole, no, he he did, Herb. <laughs> <laughs> huh? They wrote that down in the magazine. No, this was live. I heard his voice. This, there's no transcription error no. here. So I'm uh, okay. So Jimmy, you know I love you. Dave got called out. He I mean, called me. Ah, out, I don't know what's ever happened before. That's fabulous. Well, it happens all the time, but usually they leave, leave, leave some plausibility <laughs> denial there, but not Jimmy. So I'm thinking, okay, well, man, I, I respect what he does. Uh, I, I started thinking about my height and weight and, and age and his, and I thought, well, okay, he's right. Because <laughs> if I challenge Jimmy, he'll kick my ass. But we were talking, the interviewer was talking about. Uh, uh, the stereo spectrum being divided into, or you talked about, you like to think of it as hard left, hard right, and center. And I had made the point that I'm paying something at nine and nine and three or something. I think right. what it was. And, and of course, you said that was that was just wrong. <coughs> Drew, make a note. I'll, I'll, well, I taught you that, so that's wrong. Uh, and, and you said I'm a left right man. And you, you made a statement, and I, I found this fascinating. By the way, guys, I'm teasing Jimmy. He didn't say any of that. But um, you made a statement that in, the, in a, a difference to the to way you hear analog and digital is that in digital, things stick out more. And can you describe to me um, the combination of... of of Because I'm fascinated by this, and there's a lot of talk about it currently on the Internet. Uh, LCR mixing as opposed to putting things in between, and and I put things in between. I I I, I don't I, I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong or if it's just me. But can you can you teach me a little bit? Show me your philosophy about things sticking out in digital. Why why the need for hard left and hard right and center? Um, I'd like to modify that particular statement. Many things. By the way, I do remember seeing that, and I do remember thinking about it. 
because I always, I'm always looking into me. I'm going, what's, wait a second, there's got to be something to this. When I go back to why the left, right, center, it, we're, in the, we're in the age of tape. Mm -hmm. And when you have tape, something happens. This is my description. This here, the smoothing thing, it covers that whole sound field in the middle. You don't have to. Say that again now. It covers the sound field in the middle. This, the friction, that noise, mm -hmm. it covers. If you have a left and right, you listen to tape. Why do people like tape? It's like, it's like celluloid and film. It covers, there's a film that it creates in the middle. It's creating its own little field that doesn't exist in digital. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, when that stuff is removed, shit sticks out. And now, I have to say, for me, even even doing the left and right, I'm like, there's a big hole in the middle because it's not being covered by that so by those particles. Is, so what you're saying, in, a, in effect, is that I was right well, in the digital world. Well, you can pan things in a little more now because it sticks I'll, out. I'm gonna, but, <laughs> but I'm gonna, mod but I'm gonna modify why. See, okay. So Tom mm -hmm. Dowd, when I was a little, when I was a little kid, a wee little kid, mm -hmm. they had these consoles that they, they the four in line consoles. They made their own consoles, mm -hmm. little eight channel thing with whatever. Mm -hmm. This is back in well, back, way back in the Atlantic day. Records. And you know, learning from Zeppelin, from, everybody. And so Tom does. So we had this little thing, and what they did was they he built this console, and it had a didn't have a pan pot. It had left, center, and right. Mm -hmm. So I learned from those guys that way, and I it kind of just stuck with me. And I started noticing when I started trying to mix and put stuff in the middle. I noticed I was kind of fucking around doing nothing, mm -hmm. and I noticed I got more effect out of it when I went hard left and right. But I, I didn't, it just dawned on me recently, I was like, the reason he really said that, because he said the same thing one day. He says, there's no, blah, 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 it's left, right, and center. And you know, like, and I realized you were just, you just couldn't figure out how to put a pen pot on the board, dude. And then, <laughs> 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 yeah, Tommy Dow. Whew. I think I understand what you're saying. Um, I, I read an experiment where um, a top professor in audio took, um, uh, a clave, and he and he would pan it from left to right, and he brought all his students in, and he asked his students to let him know when it got halfway between left and right, and it and it the appearance it seemed to jump from center to to, to one side, and so he determined that panning is a waste of time because the human ear can't hear that space between center and hard left. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. But to me now, uh, the way my mind works is, well, you shouldn't use a clave. Try a vocal. I can hear, I can hear a vocal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not going to take the time to defend myself, even though I'm completely right. But, uh, but you know, speaking of panics, oddly enough, there's this record I did that was one of the first records that was, uh, it's by, it's called Thin Line Between Love and Hate, The Persuasions. Sure. Persuaders, Persuaders. Persuaders. And I was like, I was running out of the house. I was a kid running out, and they were like, you have to do this mix for us. And I never heard this record. It was done really poorly. Sounds really weird. I was running to come to LA to see my girlfriend, who was blah, 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 whatever. I listened to it once, ran through it. I put the two track up. I kind of did a mix, and I was out the door. And I ran out of here. And I was, and the song was called K, but the recording was terrible. And I got to LA, and it was those days when records could be on the radio real quick. It was a fucking smash in the next week. And I was going, OK, of everything I think I've done, I didn't see why that's a smash, but it was about the song. OK? OK. But when I went, the other day I was listening, I, was, I had a bunch of little kids, and you know, Jimmy's, uh, the senator was in session, mm -hmm. and I was teaching them shit. I said, oh, yeah, this is old record. You'll love this. And do you know what I heard? It starts with the piano. Bun, dun, 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 dun. That's what it starts with. And I was listening to the record, and you know what happened in the beginning? I panned the piano from left to right. That was my contribution for the day. <laughs> I swear to you. And I went, because I, I listened, I went, why the freak would you pan a piano? <laughs> because it was something to do. <laughs> there you go. So, man, um, I want my audience to really pay attention to, to, to the answer you're about to give. In, in a couple of different places, you talked about the importance of uh, uh, you, you said you said I'd like to make the case for trial and error as, and then I added uh, as a learning tool. But you, you, and then another time you said uh, the magic bullet in, in, in this process is trial and error. And and you and I both learned through trial and error. I mean, you, you were predominantly self-taught with the mentoring of a lot of really gifted people. I was predominantly self-taught with the mentoring of a lot of kind people. And that trial and error in learning. I don't want to sound like our, our parents, but that seems to be diminished now because of access to information like this. But m make the case for trial and error for me, for, for, just for our audience. Well, if you don't trial and error, you can 
go and you could find out how people did things and you're going to get stuff that pretty much just sounds like what they did and that's not really defining who you are mm -hmm. or what you do and you're not really bringing anything to it that's special or creative. You need some discovery. Don't you? Discovery. Trial and, was, trial and error is the thing that makes you know, I'm, I'm asked a lot of times by people, how'd you do this, how'd you do this? It's like, I didn't do it. I just mm -hmm. was there and I was willing to let it happen. You know, letting it happen is, that's one of the things I really do object about uh, the modern producers. Because of what I described and how they are so controlling of what they did from the beginning to the end, they don't allow the, op they don't allow the opportunity for experimentation or they can go left or right, or maybe somebody else's idea can actually enhance your idea. And that, to me, is one of the things that I do find missing. I um, I was thinking at home last night um, the difference between confidence and ego, uh, and I, I made this up. Forever. You're gonna like this. I, I started thinking uh, confidence is having no time left in a basketball game. You stand up to the line with two free throws and you know you're gonna make them. Oh. Ego is when you miss. <laughs> <laughs> well said. And well done. you can't do what we do at the level that you do it at without confidence. And if your confidence exceeds your ability by about 10%, that's healthy. You grow. If it exceeds it by 30%, you screw up a lot. And if it exceeds, if it's not as much, you don't ever grow. And um, I think you and I have a, and I don't mean to speak to, for you, but when somebody says this is the way I did it, the first thing in my mind is, okay, well now I know not to ever do that. I'm gonna do my own thing. <laughs> And I think uh, when, I, when I read about you and when I talk to you, I think you're the same way. You don't mean it disrespectfully. It's just the fun of doing this is taking an idea like what I talked about on the gates, but making them your own and experimenting and sounding bad. NS10s, you said something that fascinated me. You said that um, you love NS10s, but you don't ever work on, you don't ever, don't ever work, the, the interview asked you, well, how do you get the bottom end, Jimmy? And you said, don't need to. It's probably already right to begin with. Just leave it alone. If you if you if you add bottom end listening to your NS10s, you're gonna screw the mix up. Trust the producer. That's probably one area that he got right. And 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 can you expand on that a little bit? Well, when I say trust the producer, look at the producer I was working with. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> and that's in the, you know Speaking and you know can I to 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 actually just speak to that as well. Many times they would try to take some of those mixes out and give them to other engineers and mixers to try to do it and every time the stuff would come back and you know what they would do they were so busy trying to prove who they were they'd fuck up what was already there it happened every time mm -hmm. and maybe one of the things I brought to that table to our relationship was the fact that I recognize I don't have to do it you already did it why am I gonna you know that's a lesson I'm still learning I think I'm <laughs> getting there now finally after all this it's a tough lesson to learn well you know it's a lot of years I spent doing a lot of stuff and putting a lot of energy in, and it's like I really don't have anything to prove to anybody and that's half of my whole attitude about it. It's like, if you're doing all the work and we can keep moving forward, let's move forward. It doesn't matter whether you're credited, I'm credited, we're all going to win. And, and that's, that's a lot. Oh, rewind, rewind the tape right there and listen to that little section again because you'll learn something. Um, you also mentioned that when you're working with NS10s, you basically work at two levels. You work kind of softer for placing vocals and then for vibe, which is a Vibe and, and feel are a reoccurring theme throughout everything you do, and you 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 made the statement nobody can listen louder on NS10 than me. But I do that when I'm trying to get vibe. Expand on those two thoughts too, because I, I get a lot of that question about how loud should I listen, and right. and, and 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 you're using the NS10s as completely different sets of speakers depending on the volume you're putting through them. Totally. Well, this the the uh, the lower volume is basically so I can get just hear dimension and it's more conversational level volume, somewhere around there. And then you can hear the different placements, uh, you know, the reverb. You can hear all that stuff very, very clearly. Absolutely. When you bang that shit, all you hear is just basically one big mass of like foom, foom, foom. And all you're doing is really trying to see, is this holding up uh, to the spectrum? Is this, is this the kind of thing where somebody walks in and goes, those are NS10s? Mm -hmm. And that's when you know you, you kind of done it right. Cool. I, have, I have a little a little video blip on a YouTube thing where like one was breaking one time mm -hmm. and I, I saw it breaking and I was like I ran out the camera and you could see the freaking thing this is breaking the the uh, the, car, the the woofer the papers ripping off it's great how do you know I said how well, do you know when the sound we, is how right do we, how do we find <laughs> how do we find that on YouTube you go to YouTube you go to uh, Jimmy magic mix I guess Jimmy magic mix yeah mm -hmm. uh, cool and you'll find it it's 
Well, I'll put it on my website. I'll well, put it on my website, can I? Yeah. JimmyDouglas.com with two S's. Remember, if you only do one S, you'll find a wedding photographer. I'm not here to take pictures. I'm here to give you a great sound. Jimmy Douglas with two S's dot com. Well, hey, Drew, scratch that idea. <laughs> Wrong guy. Um, that was a little too esoteric for most of the people in the room. Um, um, uh, I love your approach. You know what? Let's get off that stuff for a minute. Uh, one of the things that I'd like our audience to know is the skill that you bring to everything you do is a function of um, coming along as you did mundane things at Atlantic for a minute, then you got trusted and you started engineering, and then you started adding parts to different things for different people, then next thing you know you got a platinum record with Slave you, you, as a producer. And, and so I, I, I just can't, I, I, I've never been able to wear a number of hats well. I, I, I can do one thing really good, and that's eat, not mixing. But the um, <laughs> uh, second thing I do pr pretty well is mixing. But um, as a producer, I was just okay. I wasn't great. And, 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 but I see the importance on a daily basis in today's world of being able to, to bring that, uh, is that me or you, Herb? Um, uh, of bringing all of that to the table because it's, 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 it's missing in a lot of what we do today, and so if you can't improve this or work with the producer here or this or here to timing here or here tuning there, and um, have, have you got any advice for, for someone that, 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 say, just spent a year at a music school and, and they're, uh, how, how do they get what it took you and I 15 years to get in a day? Well, they don't get it in a day. And um, it's very funny. I mean, it's, it's very funny you mention this because actually one of the other things that I'm doing right now, I am doing a, for lack of a better word, I call it the hang. And pretty much all those people that I see doing exactly what you're saying, which is spending a lot of money going, doing stuff that you can probably get off YouTube, and you really could. You can teach yourself this process. It's so, it is so that. refined now mm -hmm. that you can get all that information, but a lot of people need to be led. I'm not, you know, and that's just what they do. But how do you go from that and basically not cleaning toilets in a studio for the next two years and getting food, which has nothing to do with you getting into the control room, to be honest. I'm, I'm not trying to down this. I'm just being very how I feel about this. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm just offering a situation of, uh, I call it the hang, where, you know, I think some of our other constituents have these things after, their, after the course, you can get to the next level. I'm not really thinking like that. I'm thinking, how can you come and do in, a couple, in about a week and figure out how you can hone all those skills and find the people that can allow you to get moving and get into the new world? How can, how can our audience find more about this if they go to your website? If they go to my website, you'll, 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 you'll find it. that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, 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 what, I, what I believe about the future of mixing, and it comes from, you know, I hate to keep talking history. I mean, look, I was there, whatever, and things, they, they, they impressed me. They weren't always, you said something really interesting. You went, when I heard this record, it changed my da-da-da from mixing. I never really had one of those records. I had them more from a production standpoint, mm -hmm. where I just went, oh, my God, I got it, whatever. But mm -hmm. I just as a mixing thing, I don't know, maybe because I grew with Tom and Arif, and, and we could just mix. We, it wasn't a big deal. It was like you make the record, you mix it. What's mm -hmm. the, and then it became a very important thing later. Yeah, when and, I first started, there was no such thing as right. mixing. The engineer I, could mix his record. I was I moved to LA, and I don't mean to cut you off. I moved to LA in 1990, and uh, Little Silas paid me. I forget how much it was, five hundred dollars to track a record, and he said, "You want to mix it?" I'm like, "Yeah." And he <laughs> said, "Well, what do you charge?" And I said, "I don't know. What do you got?" And he goes, "Well." We normally pay, you know, thirty-five hundred for mixing, and that Whoa. was the day I became a mixer. <laughs> wow! And uh, I, wow. I did it again, her. Um, so, uh, but our backgrounds are similar because you use the term making records. We just made records. Making records, and 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 like you were saying about how to, I think you were talking about the fact of how do you, what did you say? Getting old. Mm. Ah. Mm -hmm. You were talking about actually, I believe, the fact that how you go from having the, 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 the things together mm -hmm. and 
But what it is is like I was saying that the, the field that I was given was like you are there, you're going to do it. If there was no producer, quote unquote, you became the producer by default. And there was a lot of that from, you know, Atlantic standpoint. They were like, we have an artist, we have a thing, you're responsible, do it. And, and we're not going to pay you. Um, <laughs> but don't you, think, don't you think those skill levels are, are vitally important now more so than ever because a young producer can come along and you can be his safety net. You don't want to produce the record. No. You're just there if he needs it. And if he doesn't need it, then you're, you're, you're the mixer. If he needs some production help, you, you got that skill. If he needs to find a guitar player to throw a live part on, you've got that skill. You're a one-stop shop for today's modern uh, music creators. That's what I was trying to That's tell you, exactly Drew, that, that, that the future for you is to get those skills and those, when you take those skills into the next 20 years, that's going to be way more valuable than just, um, Herb and I were talking a football analogy on the way over, and, you know, in football, if, this, if, if mixing were a football game, you'd need to be able to play a little defensive back, a little quarterback, a little running back. You know, it's, it's a whole different world. Well, and uh, I, I think my, my vision of mixing, you know, that's where, where I was. My vision of mixing is, like, actually... I think because of this, the, the level of the technology, I think it's becoming a little bit, a lot less important. And I think that, like I said, when you build this stuff, you pretty much, it's pretty much built. You know, many times, I, I hate to say this, many times I get mixes, like the least that I do, the more they like it. I can't even tell you the amount of times I do what I do and I make it whatever, and they just, they're freaking out, they hate it. They don't hate it, but they don't like it. And I'll go back and I'll just put the basic two track up, not the two track, and I'll just kind of match it mm -hmm. and just basically master the Pro Tools mm -hmm. or master the, the multi track mm -hmm. and just touch little touches, but it's, mm -hmm. it really sounds like the same record. And I can't tell you how many times I get the comment back, you knocked it out of the park. Mm -hmm. And I go, wow. Tell me if you like so. this. <laughs> uh, what I think is, is we're barbers, and sometimes they just want a little off the side and ah. a little off the back. And sometimes I give them a mohawk, and, yeah. that's the, and they go home and look in the mirror and go, what, what did I... I... <laughs> that's good. Okay. I got one more question for you, Jim. Um, um, you, you use the term, when you're, when you're thinking in terms of left, right, and center, that you pack the middle. And, and, and you were describing vocals, and you were describing how, you, instead of reverb, you use delays, and you use shorter delays, and, you, and, and, and like I'm thinking, oh, that's cool. So. I'll, I'll do that. I'll pay my delays. But no, then you said, no, I put the delays in the middle. And, and you pack the middle. And then you've got your left and right. Left and right. Can you expand on that a little bit? Because I, I think that's, uh, knowing how your records sound as, as good as I do, that was the missing element that I hadn't quite been able to copy yet. So well, allow it, me to copy that. Here it is. It's, uh, well, the way that I see it, and I don't know if it works. I, it just happened to work. It happened to work, to work one day, and I kept doing it. So, you know, you have... Um, this, you have left and right, and you have, a, let's say, a vocal in the middle. So you have that, and it's on a plane of this. It's a mm -hmm. flat plane. Mm -hmm. Vocal in the middle, background's out here. Now, we're not in each other's way. I can hear everybody very clearly, because everybody has a space, very clear space. Mm -hmm. The delay for the backgrounds allows the backgrounds to actually concavely, well, from your perspective. Mm -hmm. In other words, now the delay pushes them back, so now mm -hmm. I've actually added dimension mm -hmm. to the left and the right by going backwards, so now it's a bigger... So, in effect, you're using the delay as a front-to-rear pan pot? Pretty much. Okay. Wow, well said. Very good. Well, that's what he does. He, oh. he does that. We set him up. So let me ask you a question yes. so we can get to some specifics. You got your arm loosened up? It's about time for batter's box. Oh, you I ready? thought you were talking about something else. I'm like, Herb, no, no, that's no, a little no. personal, isn't it? No, no, so, no, no. Do, do I have... He's going to throw some stuff at you, and you answer back. This is, this is our little segment called batter's box. Okay. And, uh, Dave, tee up. Throw the first pitch. I wrote down the, the batter's pitch. box that you did me, so I'm going to give it to him. Okay, cool. Okay, Jim, tell me, uh, in all the world, plug-in, analog, when I just say this, uh, what's your, what, what's your go-to EQ for vocals? The, uh, a Pultec, a Pultec, you mean too much, a plug-in or a real life? Either one, whatever comes oh, real to life? first. Oh, the uh, EQ would be, uh, if I had a Pultec, I would definitely go for a Pultec. If not a Pultec, I use that to the one that I own, which is the, the tech thing. Oh, okay. Acoustic yeah. guitars. Acoustic guitars? Uh, I would probably use a Neve 1073. Cool. Um, acoustic piano? Uh, uh, once again, Pultec, Neve. Okay. Um, a Rhodes? 
Ah, uh, I haven't used Zorn in a long time. Hmm. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> but you kind of come stock from the factory, Santa. I own good. one. Uh, electric guitar. Electric guitar? It varies. Like on a rock thing? Like totally varies. Just first thing, though. I, 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 I have to hear the sound of that guitar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would probably go for some sort of mid-range thing. Uh, anybody who would do mid-range for me. Okay. Uh, overheads. Overheads. Uh, once again, the Neves or Poltex. Cool. When you say in Poltex, you're talking about EQP 1As, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, kick drums. Kick drums. Ah. Full tech, full tech, full tech, Old school dude, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Things are great. Uh, snare. Snare. Once again, that one particularly varies based on the thing. I kind of would use a plug-in, probably. Can you tell me which one? Can I just tell you which one? It would be probably a Waves plug-in, probably that R thing. Oh, okay. R, 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 the yeah. R-E. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, a bass, live bass. Uh, live bass, I, I would love to have something like... Uh, the bass, I would go more for the compressor than the EQ. Well, tell me the compressor, then. I would probably use um, 1176. Uh, live strings. Live strings. Uh, if I can have a Neve thing, that'd be freaking great. Ten seventy three, you mean? Yeah, that that I mean, yeah, they just sound great. Oh wow. Um, and this is this is this is personal. Uh, I, I, uh, being an engineer, sometimes I, I, I I'm uncomfortable asking, but stereo bus. Stereo bus. Uh, I would go to uh, my box. I have a box called the the senator. And uh, where can I get one? You can go in right here. Oh, it's our giveaway. I brought you a present. Here's our giveaway. Remember when I met you? You were we were day wow. with uh, jo Joe Ciccarelli, and yeah, we were with uh, Chris uh, Ordell. Uh, and you guys going, "What's the bus compressor?" And I was like, yeah. "Well, I don't really use it." And you said you don't really use them, but I was I have one that was being made by somebody, and it's called the Senator. Wow. Oh my God. And I that wanted to bring beautiful. you one, Dave. I wanted to. Uh, this is the best batter's box ever. I wanted to just have you have, a, have wow. it and play with it if you like. Yeah. You know, you can love it or hate it. You I'll use you it today. Do it. You can do what you want to do with it. You can put it in your garage. Will you show me how to use it? That's two, well, more I knobs think, than I I think I you can figure out how to use it. I haven't seen this many knobs since, uh, since the uh, Mercury but bundle. There it is. It's, you know, it was created by a, a guy in a, a studio that I work at Manhattan Center named Joel Shinneman. And, he was creating this thing, and I helped him along the way just to keep putting stuff that I'd like to see in there and different things. And when he finally got it right, I was like... What's detector gain? Detector gain is uh, the thing that's going to uh, basically tell you how much it's going to hit. Be play with it. Okay. How's that? Kind of like a knee? Kinda, no, it's not a knee at all. No, no. If anything, that thing has a dynamic ratio compressor, uh, compression thing, which has... In other words, this the harder you beautiful. hit it, the more it oh. does. Can you guys see, see that's this? That's the stereo bus guy. And this is the, the box that, whenever I use it, whoever's in the room, they just go, I got to have one of those. And it's like, I don't know what it does. I don't make these things. I just use them. This cool. is totally unrehearsed. This no is right. too <laughs> Man, I'm trying to think of other batter's box things. Uh, well, what's your favorite Mercedes? Do I get one of those? <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a BMW man, sorry. Uh, what's your, I'll, take, <laughs> I'll take a 7 Series. The cool part is we're going to put pictures of it up on Facebook on our page afterwards. So that, well, so, so, oh, that's so, brilliant. You know, but the coolest, but you're going to love it. That's and really they can good. find this on your website? You can find this on my website, yeah. Very cool. Well, can we do this, too? Can we build in some of our... Uh, Viewer questions go into Absolutely. what we call our corner office. Will you Absolutely. want to roll that graphic? And I'm, I'm out of here, guys. I don't go play with that. Uh, Sorry. Uh, 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 uh. There's our See corner me. office. So Drew, our CJ, will will uh, fire up some questions for everybody. Yeah. Before, uh, before I do, actually, I'm going to expand on. Before Jimmy, uh, you were talking about you were going to talk about an analogy as far as the state of music, where you can, like where you started and where it's going. You had an analogy, but we we kind of we went off topic. If you remember at all. <laughs> Do you remember it all? I remember it all. Uh, that's the other thing. I'm a survivor. I'm so, lucky to be here. So you'll be, you'll be a I got you. I got you. No problem. No problem. Um, okay. Good question from one of our sponsors, uh, BK Drew. What's up, Drew? Uh, he says tape is like painting on a canvas or a back or a backing. Digital is like placing things in space. What do you think about that statement? I, it, I, I like that. I like the, the vision that he just, he just described. Okay. Read it again, Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you think about this too, Dave? Uh, tape is like painting on a canvas or a backing. Digital is like placing things in space. What do you and, think about that? And when you think of space, what do you think of? Oh, I think of. It's cold. 
and there's no dimension, and it just kind of goes on, and there's nothing cohesive about Don't it. Don't bring me down, Jimmy. I'm, I'm sorry. Good, I'm sorry. I'm but having he's... a good moment right now with my new uh, <laughs> well, he my said new it. senator. <laughs> 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 you want to expand on that at all? No. I, I, how can you expand on that? That was perfect. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. Uh, for Jimmy, uh, how, do, how do you get... I'm sorry. How do you go about fitting in the million and one ad-libs and vocals on a Timbaland Missy record? I don't do them. They do the ad-libs. They do it. Yeah. How do I fit them in? Yeah. You just, you know, you just keep doing it until everything works. I don't... Trial and Th error. That's an, uh, trial, trial and error. error. That's an honest answer, by the way. I really have to say that. I say that and people go, oh, you just did. I'm like, I'm really not kidding. You just do it and then when it works, you go, wow, this is amazing. It works. Timlin puts a lot of trust in you and faith and confidence in you. A lot of people don't don't know the contributions to those records that you've made. I do, but uh, he, he gives you a lot of faith and confidence and trust because together you guys are a great team. You know, when I think of I think of engineers and producers, I think of uh, John Gass and Face or uh, yeah. Steve Hodge and Jimmy and Terry, Jimmy Douglas and Timbaland. Oh, thank you. That was from uh, 111 Entertainment. Uh, from Richie Palooza, what kind of pre-production do you do before starting a project as an engineer, as a producer, et cetera? Uh, that's, th those will be different times. As a producer, hopefully, in a perfect world, we can go and go somewhere for two weeks and not in the studio, but actually now it's in the studio. I, I'm, I'm confused because, you know, back in the day it was like you don't rehearse in the studio. Right. You don't waste that time. Yep. But So if pre-production to me still says, the band, we come, we rehearse, we do stuff. We can record it if we want to, but like, we write the songs, we put it together, we figure out what we're going to do. Then we go to the studio and we actually execute it. You bring up a point. Uh, you, would, you would do it differently with a live band than you would with somebody like Timberland. Absolutely. Timberland, you're going to build it in the studio, yeah, right there. Right. We're going to build it daily. And if I'm in the mixing thing, I try not to ruin mixes I didn't actually work on. I try not to ruin them by knowing them before I get to touch them, because then I get all these preconceived no notions, and then I kind of become useless in terms of being able to change things about them. Yeah, one more good true. one, true. Yeah. One more good one. Okay. Um, actually, I, I got a question. Uh, you work with Donny Hathaway. Oh. I got I to gotta know more about that relationship, That's if energy. you can expand on that at all. Uh, Donny was, was the guy that, you know, I was the little kid in the place, and Donny was the guy that came in who was brought in by a guy named King Curtis, and he was... You know, that I must say this, too. When you don't know how great people are going to be, it has nothing to do with how great they're going to be. It's just either they're good and you enjoy them, and the rest of it, history, becomes all that other stuff. But it was this guy who was really good, Donny Hathaway. The guy sang amazing. Played piano. And amazing. he played piano amazing. He, was, and he actually, I have to say, he was probably one of the few geniuses I've met. And I used, you know, who's a genius? No, he was yeah. a genius. And our and, audience, Google and Google and YouTube Donny Hathaway, you'll and, be amazed. And and his daughter Layla too. You worked with her. Yes, Layla yeah, is absolutely. like, she's she's incredible too. So they were like, here is this guy. We have to. He has to work in the studio. Work with him. And that's kind of how it started. And it was just like that's what we would do. I just have to show up. You know, Jimmy, you said uh, uh, this will be the last one, Herb. You said that you have one way of working, one way of treating everybody. If 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 a newbie comes in with with something, you treat them the same way you would treat Zeppelin and Farner and Timlin. If Timlin comes in, you treat him the same way as you'd treat the... You have one way of working for everything. <clears throat> and I think that's, uh, that's uh, why you got great, because you're always practicing for the big game. You're never playing... You're always playing at game speed. You're never... Everybody's, everybody's important, man. That's, that's really, I really believe that inside of my heart. It's everybody's humanity. entitled to the same, you know. Yeah. I think that's great. And so much information, oh, Jimmy. Thank Jimmy. you, man. Thanks, well, man. Next time you're in town, yeah. will you come Thanks back? I will come back. You know, you, you I'll know, bring you, that Mercedes with me next time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, BMW. BMW. <laughs> you know you live in my hometown now, right? Miami. That's where I'm from. Are you really? Yeah. So, so then, basically, may I ask you, please, to be one of the first to come down? I didn't, ex ex um, I didn't explantify. What's the word? Expand. But one of the things I'm doing with The Hang is I'm having people like you, myself, Phil, they will come down for a day and they will actually share. We will share. Yeah, consider it done. Yes? I'll say it on there. I'll, I'll, whatever it takes. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, thanks to the senator. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, that's this great. We'll have you back. Been great. Sir James, man, this is Thank a pleasure. You. I'll tell you what, I, I was going to try and catch you off guard, but you, 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 you handled it beautifully. I made all that stuff up, guys, about him saying that <laughs> we stuff. we got a little bit of work to do before we get out of here, which let's announce the winner of last week.
the I already advertisers. won mine. <laughs> yeah, you won. And Drew, I brought a yellow legal pad to give to you. Yeah, Congratulations. Nice. That's what we <laughs> So the winner last week of our avid giveaway is Vibes Kid. He's from London at Vibes Kid. Congratulations to Vibes Kid. You know, we're going to give a package away wait, each wait, week. Wait, wait, wait. Do the drum roll again, Jimmy. That was the drum roll? No, we, you did earlier, but I'm, I can't feel the rain or whatever. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're good. So, uh, <laughs> I can't feel the rain. Congratulations, Survives Kids. Uh, and uh, Will's going to throw up on screen how you enter next week, a little bit of a URL change, go to the site. It's probably coming up here in a second, so you want to make sure that you enter. We're going to be giving away that Pro Tools 9 each week. <gasps> there you see it up on the screen, so make sure that you... Uh, that you enter and uh, we will get it to you. On um, Pro Tools 9, it's it's really cool because you don't you don't need uh, interfaces. You can put this on your uh, on your computer and be working. You don't have to have interfaces if you don't want to. That's what's so cool about this version. So, so. each week, make sure you enter it. You see it up on the screen. You see it right there below us or wherever it is. There it is. Um, and, well, can uh, I get me one of those, Hug? Uh, we can work it out. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to trade this in for that. <laughs> You're using Pro Tools 9 without any interf interfaces right now, aren't you, Drew? Um, um, yeah. Uh, anyways, we, we got to get out of here. So we want to thank our friends at Avid for doing that. Congratulations, yeah. Vibes Kid. Our audience, get in there and, and, and uh, make sure you enter, and we'll get next week's to you. Dave, why don't you uh, say goodbye? And, uh, and actually, interesting enough, right before we went on air, I got a text from a very, who you've been talking to, a very important singer, songwriter, producer who wants to be on the show in the future. So we got some good guests coming up for you. Can't mention it. Can't mention it yet. Well, so why don't you, we all know? No, nobody knows. So let's wrap up and let's get out. Who? You. Okay, is that it? You want me to say No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Christine? No, she doesn't produce. <laughs> hey, guys. I told you this was going to be a good show. Um, I, 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 I really want to implore you to go back and rewind and study what Jimmy said because... Uh, he can't save you the 15, 20 years that he put in the trenches, but he can save you one or two maybe, and that's a lot when you consider the information that you're going to get if you rewind this and really study what he said. And um, a lot of information. I, I know I've learned some stuff when I was reading up on some of the things that, that Jimmy's done in the past, and uh, I want you to particularly pay attention to the left-right-center thing because I think that there's uh, a, a future. Uh, I think that that, that that concept is going to be firmly entrenched in the future of what we do. So anyway, um, Drew, good job today. Herb, out fun as always. You too, bro. And, Thanks uh, to Jimmy. Jimmy, uh, we're out, guys. I hate saying goodbye. You know, I always take these. I'm like the Almond Brothers. They can't finish a song. They do a three-minute song and a 40-minute ending. I do like a 15-minute interview and a 30-minute goodbye. So, adios, amigos. See you guys.